part of today's lecture after this repetition. Today is about variances, and it's the part of, part of chapter 9 in the book. We're going to look at a little example in the beginning. We're going to estimate variances. We're going to have a look at a new distribution. We are going to do a confidence interval for a variance. We're going to do a hypothesis test for one variance. And we're going to do a hypothesis test for two variances. That's basically three methods. And in, in those three methods I give you, you're going to meet two new distributions today. But they, that's not going to ruin the day for us. It's just any other one new distribution coming up shouldn't hopefully ruin everything for us. Let's begin with, this, uh, with these words. Specifying. Many of my examples are from the medical industry, and this is because the medical industry in Denmark is and the place where most people with my education is actually getting a job after they finish their education. It's the, uh, the place where most statisticians in Denmark are actually working. Novo Nordic, Lundbeck, Actually, this afternoon, the half-yearly meeting of the uh, Statistical Society in Denmark is having their meeting, and it's taking place at Lundbeck, just as an example of that people from the medical companies are highly involved in this, in this area. This is the story. We are producing tablets. In tablets, we have an active substance, an active matter, and you mix it with some powder, and then the mixture is formed into tablets. It is important that the tablets contain the same, that the specified amount of active content, right? So in the, uh, where you sort of have your mixture in a big uh, thing in the company, in the production plant, you have to, it's important that this mixture is homogeneous, right? It's just uh, sketching the situation we're looking at. Now we consider such a mixture where you're going to produce a large amount of tablets. Um, the target for this particular tablet is that uh, one per mil, one milligram per gram of the weight should be active substance, active matter. And of course, I would say, when we produce, I've said that previously, when we produce tablets, they should be on target, and they should also individually, from tablet to tablet, uh, be close to target, meaning that the variability on individual tablets must be hopefully small, right? And on average, they should be on target also. Both things should be okay, ideally, when we... So they should have a small variance from tablet to tablet. I hope you can follow me there. Let's assume the normal distribution today. How do we estimate the variance? Well, this is hopefully not a new slide for you. Here is the same formula as you have seen previously. So in a way, technically speaking, I am still where we were in, at the first lecture. Here is the sample variance expressed in this case as a function of the random variables, capital X1 up to Xn. It's just the variance formula where we com compare each individual x with the mean of x or the average x. We have to think again, like I also discussed last week, that a variance in itself is not the final truth, right? The variance is actually also a sample st statistic, you could call it. The variance depends on the sample data that you get, right? That's to be seen explicitly here. The data X enters this. So next time I measure, say, 20 tablets, if I measure 20 tablets, I get one average, I get one variance. If I do it again, 20 tablets, just uh, 10 minutes later, uh, the same day, I will get another variance, right? And if I do it again one hour later in the production line, I will get a third variance. 
The computed variance will change from sample to sample, right? Can you follow me so, so far? I hope you can. This is really, again, I'm, I'm repeating myself. This is the core of what this course is about, right? This is acknowledging this fact that when we compute a variance, we cannot just take it for granted that when we have five tablets this afternoon, we have the truth about the variance. No, nope. the hell you haven't. You don't have the truth. You have to think about this sampling variability. And that's this, what this course is about, thinking about, and, and actually more specific, we are not only thinking about, we are putting this thinking about sampling variability into specific tools and operational procedures to how to deal with this, right? That's the core of the course. Now, how do we deal with this? How do we deal with sampling uncertainty, sampling variability, that a variance is not just the variance? Well, the thing is, we have to think about how can a variance change from time to time, right? From sample to sample. You have all you nodded when you accepted that all of us using our common sense know that if I compute a variance again and again, of course, you wouldn't expect to get exactly the same number. All of you is intelligent enough to not be surprised of that if you did it out there when you get out in a company at Novo or Lone Bank and become production engineers or whatever, you become out there to be in charge of what's going on. You would not be surprised even now because you're intelligent enough to realize that. However, what are you going to do about it? What, what can you, what is the, if you want to move on, yeah, that's fine enough. I know it's not being the same again and again. You have, would have to think about how can it change? from time to time. That's how you can become good about it, intelligent about it, deal with it. That's because you can find out how can it change. This is where probability theory comes in and telling us, we know the mathematical guys who know probability theory can tell you how does a variance change from time to time. And here's the, here's the answer. This, the proof of the answer is the probability course or my extra math lectures, but here is the result of it. The result is that a variance behaves like a chi-square distribution. A variance from time to time is not the same, exactly the same, and the way it behaves, the way it changes, the way it sort of distributes itself is like a chi-square distribution. Theoretically, the chi-square is a consequence of the normal distribution. If original data is normal distributed, then when you square it and compute the variance, the chi-square distribution pops up. That's the probability theory in it. The specific statement comes here because it's clear that a vari the way a variance changes and what the variance would be from time to time will depend on the true variance, of course. <laughs> I mean, the underlying true variability of the system, if you have a large variance, it will be a large, some large values, maybe uh, changing a lot around this large variance. If it's a small variance, close to zero, it will be smaller variabilities on the variance around this uh, close to zero. A variance can never be zero, right? So, so such a distribution actually is, let me show it. Such a chi-square distribution is the right skewed. It's not a symmetric distribution anymore. It's a distribution only living on the positive interval, and it's right skewed, right? Back to the slide. The specific, the way of expressing the distribution comes like this. We say that if we take the computed variance, if we multiply it by the n minus one, which we actually use to to divide with in the variance formula. So basically, it's the sum of squared deviations. That's another way of saying it. If we take that number relative to the true variance, if we take the computed variance times n minus 1 relative to the true variance, which we don't know, but this is a theoretical result. If we take it relative to the true variance, such a statistic behaves this is the statistic behaving exactly like a chi-square. That's the probability theoretical results that we can use to be intelligent when we do statistics. 
Like the t-distribution, there is not only one single chi-square distribution. It depends on the number of uh, sample, the number of observations in the sample for which we take the average. So, um, we choose the one with n minus one degrees of freedom. That is the theory. And here's the chi-square. It comes. I have one more slide, sorry, on the theory. Um, I have one more slide on this theory. It, it comes in table five, and we have it in P chi square in R. There is a function called P C H I S Q for chi square, um, and we can find the probabilities there also, exactly like the T. It's a sampling distribution for the variance. That was the theory. So we step on to the next part, which is 